Inshallah, we continue with uh, those who are joining us. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum. If you said salam, and if you didn't say salam, we say assalamu alaikum to you, inshallah. We are doing the tafsir of Juz Amma based on the tafsir of Sayyidina Ibn Kathir. Inshallah, summarized just so we, most people, they only know surahs or they have memorized Juz Amma and the recitation of the verses of Juz Amma. So it's important to know what we're reciting. Uh, so that we also get the barakah and the under the of understanding the verses of Quran and not just reciting them. So we we are in Surah Ta'abasa wa Tawalla and Ja'ahul A'ma. And we had mentioned in the previous tafsir and uh, in the previous uh, session that the, t- the tafsir of Sayyidina Ibn Kathir and many tafsirs say that Abasa wa Tawalla mean he frowned and he turned away from the blind man Ibn Ibn Maktoum that that means Prophet is the one who frowned although the language permits because there is no it's open so Abasa wa Tawalla he frowned and he turned away who is he? there was no specification so uh, we had mentioned that uh, there's some uh, ulama of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah who have uh, elaborated on this point of ta'wil and tafsir that the action of frowning is not befitting that Allah would describe his Prophet ﷺ with frowning and he is the one who said tabassumuka fi waji akhika sadaqa that the one the one who said that you're smiling in the face of your brother is a charity how could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to him Abasa? No. So we mentioned that the only other place Abasa as is mentioned in the Quran is twice is in Surah Al Muddathir Thumma Nadara Thumma Abasa wa Basara Thumma Adbara wa Sagbara that it was talking about Al Walid, one of the chieftain of Quraysh who rejected Prophet out of Asabiyya, out of uh, out of uh, arrogance and because his people are not accepting that Allah described him with frowning in Surah Al-Muddathir that when he was asked what should we do what, sh- what should we what kind of fake news we are going to put about Prophet Sallallahu he said you the only thing I could think of is call him a magician uh, so in Allah is mentioning that in, the, in Surah Al-Muddathir that he frowned and incidentally he was one of the people that came to speak to Prophet that day to convince him otherwise. And Al-Walid was there in that majlis where the blind man came and this Abasa wa Tawalla, he frowned and he turned away. So the one who frowned in Surah Al-Muddathir according to uh, Sayyidina Abdul Ba'ath Al-Kittani and uh, Mawlana Yusri Jabur and many of the Mashaykh of Al-Sunnah that, that the one who frowned is Al-Walid, is the, the unbeliever. And the reason he frowned is because Sayyidina Ibn Ibn Maktoum is from the poor people of Mecca. And these chief, chiefs, they, they would frown upon sitting with people who are second and third class. They demanded to be, you have to have nasab, you have to have wealth, you have to be included in their club, you have to be a chief of your tribe to be sitting with them. So it's important to reiterate that, that when we read the Quran, that that we we give the best husn al and ta'wil whenever Prophet is mentioned. That Prophet cannot be the one who frowned. So the story is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to him. This is blind man, this poor blind man, he's coming to purify himself. Or to, re, to be reminded about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can benefit. And then he's saying, leave those. You, you have, your duty is not to uh, try to convince people who are denying you, rejecting you, arrogant, belittling you. Leave those who are not accepting Allah's words. 
You are, your duty is to warn those whose hearts are open to the message. This is your duty. So those who ignore them. Zin man wazanaka bima wazanak. As Imam Shafi'i would say. Uh, you don't waste your time trying to convince people who are unconvincible. And, and this is something we can apply this wisdom in our lives. Is that identify and understand that people, some people will never accept what you say. So don't waste your breath uh, on trying to convince them. And, and uh, for people who are du'at, who are trying to call people to Allah, especially in the West, it is important to call people who want to be called, who want to know. And don't go and, uh, Mawlana Shah Nazim used to say, don't throw gems to children or people who are not accepting. وَمَا عَلَيْكَ أَلَّا يَزَّكَّ And he's saying, uh, the one who came to you uh, fearing Allah, you are not giving him time. You are trying to convince the chiefs of Quraysh. Because Prophet wanted to save everybody. So his mercy, he wanted to, to get these uh, bosses and chiefs in their uh, tribes. He was, if he brings them, then their people will come. So he was hoping to convince them. Allah is saying, never mind them. They accept you, they accept. They don't accept, leave them. And pay attention to those who are coming to you. Huh? Who are coming to you asking. Those are the ones you're obligated to pay attention to. <clears throat> and then the verses go, كَلَّا إِنَّهَا تَذْكِرَةً Verily, indeed, it is an admonition. Means this surah. فَمَنْ شَاءَ ذَكَرَةً Indeed, it is an admonition for those who want to be admonished. Who wants to learn. He said, فَمَنْ شَاءَ ذَكَرَ Also could mean that whoever wills, whoever can, should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is said that the dhikr here is the dhikr of these verses. فِي صُحُفِ مُكَرَّمَ In records, in documents, مُكَرَّمَ means honored, exalted. مَرْفُوعَةٍ مُطَهَّرَةٍ Lofty, مَرْفُوعَةٍ um, uh, Exalted مُطَهَّرَةٍ Pure, purified, pure And these are the verses of the Qur'an Who is delivering these verses? بِأَيْدِي سَفَرَةٍ Safara are a type of angels They're like ambassadors Allah sends to do different duties Kiramin barara, and this is according to the tafsir of Ibn Kathir and Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas that they are the angels. Safara, kiram, barara, honored and barara and righteous. Here Sayyidina Abdullah ibn, Ab uh, Sayyidina ibn Kathir saying, noble, handsome, and honorable in their creation, these, these angels, and righteous, and pure, and perfect. And this, why, why, uh, Prophet, uh, in uh, the hadith, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alaihi Wasallam, الذي يقرأ الذي يقرأ القرآن وهو ماهر به, and this is something for us all to be happy about about this hadith. This is a glad tidings that whoever recites Quran and he is an expert, he's excellent, he's a master in recitation, is with. السَّفَرَ الْكِرَامِ الْبَرَرَ He is with, he is with the rank of these angels. They are السَّفَرَ the ambassadors, kiram honored barara. So this indicates that uh, the verses talk, are talking about the angels. And then he said, Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, وَالَّذِي يَقْرَأَ الْقُرْآنَ وَالَّذِي يَقْرَأُهُ وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِ شَاقٍ لَهُ أَجْرًا And then he, Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said. And the one who reads it, he's not very good at recitation or reading the Qur'an. 
and it is difficult for him to read it. وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِ شَاقٍ لَهُ أَجْرًا He has two rewards. He has the reward of struggling and the reward of reading. Huh? So it is important, even if you barely speak any Arabic, uh, to, to try to learn, even, even if you do a couple of lines a day, even if you do one verse a day, or if you can do one page a day, even if you just look at the Quran and put your finger and go over it uh, like this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kareem, He is generous. And then, قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the condition of the arrogant human beings. قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ means may he be cursed. قُتِلَ here may he be killed, but according to the tafsir is may he be cursed. This refers to those who reject the call, who are arrogant. And we're talking in the siyaq, we're talking about the surah and the chieftains rejecting and accusing Prophet ﷺ that he is a magician. So Allah is that type of people, may they be cursed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَ means kufr can mean denying or covering, means how uh, how much he, he denies the truth. Yani, this Al-Walid, this chief of Quraysh, when he heard the Quran, he, he understood that it is not a human being. Still, he rejected it because he wants to be one with his people. And because he's the chief of his people, if his people are not accepting, he's not accepting. Yani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, may he be cursed how much he denies the truth. How much he is kafir. Qutila al-insan. Ma akfara. How ungrateful he is. And this means that when human being rejects, yani we, human beings are honored creation because they have the ability to choose. So there is no worse than the human being in creation when he rejects the truth. Qutila al-insanu. Ma akfara. And then Allah is reminding us, saying, who are, you, who are you to reject that there is a creator? Who brought you forth? Min ayi shay'in khalaqa. Min nutfatin khalaqahu faqaddara. He says, what have you been created from? You have been created from a drop of liquid. Min nutfa, the sperm. Faqaddara, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it Due in proportion, exact in proportion. ثُمَّ السَّبِيلَ يَسَّرَ And then who, who guided that, that drop of, of liquid to become, uh, to go into an egg, to become a, uh, a baby? ثُمَّ huh? السَّبِيلَ يَسَّرَ Means he made the path easy for him. Sayyidina Abdul Abbas said that uh, يعني he made his coming out of his mom's belly easy for him. This is one interpretation. Another ta'wil is sabil for guidance. Sabil for uh, the way for guidance. Allah made it easy for those who choose it. Inna hadaynahu sabila imma shakiran wa imma kafura. We have made the, the ways clear for him. Either he choose to be grateful or to, to be a kafir and a denier. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the Qur'an says, ثُمَّ أَمَاتَهُ فَأَقْبَرَ Then, if you weren't able to bring yourself into life, and you have no control on when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused your death, and you exit this world. ثُمَّ أَمَاتَهُ فَأَقْبَرَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused them to die, and, and He entered the grave. Huh? ثُمَّ إِذَا شَاءَ أَنْشَرَ Then when Allah wills, He will resurrect him forth back again. Huh? And, and the people, how could you deny? قُتِلَ huh? الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَ Then from these verses you understand. Allah is saying, with all these signs and your own creation, how could you deny? How could you reject? 
ومن آياته in uh, Sayyidina Amin Kathir uses another verse to show the meaning ومن آياته أن خلقكم من تراب ثم إذا أنتم بشر تنتشرون and some of his signs is that he created you from what? from from turab, from dust then you became a human being going here and there and saying I these are all signs كلا لما يقضي ما أمر Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, human being has not done what he was created for, what he was commanded to do. Yeah, means, Allah, Ibn Jarir here is saying that this matter is that this disbelieving man, this rejecting man, huh, has not, that the, that the matter is not as he says or he claims at all that uh, he claims that he has fulfilled Allah's rights upon him regarding himself and his wealth that that is not true kalla lamma yaqdi ma amara means man has not done uh, what he's obligated to do and imposed on him by his creator <coughs> Allah knows best. ثُمَّ إِذَا شَاءَ أَنْشَرَ Then when Allah wills, He will resurrect him again. كَلَّا لَمَّا يَقْضِي مَا أَمَرَ Verily, He has not done what He was obligated to do, human being. Another meaning is that Allah has not ordered him yet to be resurrected. كَلَّا لَمَّا يَقْضِي مَا أَمَرَ according to Ibn Kathir. And then the surah goes on to mentioning not only the creation of man, as we, we just talked, the creation of a human being, his lifespan, his death, all out of his control, also his sustenance. Also, not only his creation and his death, but his means of, of existing in this world. Say, and the verses go, فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِ Let him look at his own food, his own sustenance. Let human being look at, where is this coming from? أَنَّا صَبَبْنَا الْمَاءَ صَبَّ Rain, we poured it. ثُمَّا شَقَقْنَا الْأَرْضَ شَقَّ Then we collected it on, in the earth and we made... Uh, vegetation to sprout we, we brought forth from the earth uh, seeds uh, fruits and grapes and qab is what is moist uh, green herbal plants that animals graze on vegetation وَزَيْتُونَ and olives وَنَخْلَ and dates وَحَدَائِقَ غُلْبَ gardens uh, gardens of date palms uh, that are thick vegetation Ibn Abbas says it means everything that is gathered and collected and all the fruits that are gathered and collected وَفَاكِهَةً وَأَبَّا And fruits. أَبَّا فَاكِهَةً is everything that is eaten ripe, but أَبْ is what the earth grows that is eaten by grazing animals. So we took care of your sustenance, we took care of your animal sustenance, and this whole earth we made it and to, to serve you. وَفَاكِهَةً وَأَبَّا فَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا حَبَّا وَعِنَبًا وَقَبَّا وَزَيْتُونًا وَنَخْلًا وَحَدَائِكَ غُلْبًا وَفَاكِهَةً وَأَبَّا مَتَاعًا لَكُمْ وَلِأَنْعَامِكُمْ A provision for your benefit 
and for your cattle. Huh? So, how could you deny? And this whole surah is talking after after all these signs that you have a Lord and Creator, and this Lord and Creator has created you, uh, is is in charge of your life in your coming to this world, leaving this world, of your food, of your sustenance, of your animal sustenance, and you deny him. So then we go to the warning and wa'id in, in uh, Surah Abasa, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ When the judgment day arrives, and we leave that till next time, وَمِنَ اللَّهِ التَّوْفِيقِ بِحُرْمَةِ الْحَبِيبِ بِحُرْمَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ صلى على محمد Thank you all who join us السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله we Allah accept your fast and your ibadah don't forget that we all have an accepted dua at the time of iftar pray for us we pray for you إن شاء الله ومن الله التوفيق السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته